All right, guys, Shotty T here back in action with the live commentary because the last war was completely voiceover because um, we were enjoying ourselves in South Beach. And I see why Stephen A. Smith uh, rants about that. If you guys don't know, that's the ESPN first take guy. He talks about that being one of his favorite cities, and I don't I don't blame him. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there because we are a family-friendly channel. But anyway, um, we finally got off the losing streak last war. So this war, of course, got the usual suspects banned. And I got a different attack team that I normally don't bring. Um, of course, the coming person I'm bringing is going to be Storm Pyramid X. But we're going to be bringing on Sigil Witch, who's going to be for that first fight. I can also use Storm for that fight, too. But Storm's going to be fighting quite a bit, so we're going to spare her at least one fight with that Annihilus. And then we're going to be bringing on Magneto, because it's going to be some relevant champs. I'm actually going to be taking a different path in Section 2. Because we do have an Elsa with Suicides and uh, the person that's running Path, path 6. Um, can't afford to bring Mutant. I mean, could have brought Mutant, but it would just made it easier. We just swapped paths because uh, she has the champs that can handle Path 5 as well for Ebb and Flow. And then as far as uh, my... So I'm taking on Path 5, Section 1. Path 6, Section 2. Then we're going to be taking on this Kingpin here. I'm gonna be taking on Cersei with Sigil Witch, and then the Magneto is gonna be used for this Modoc. All right, so we're gonna be taking seven fights total. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in with this first fight. Uh, it's a new week. Um, heard there was some announcements about the war being cut short, but that happened. I have to look more into that. But we're gonna get in here. Um, new week, new Sigil. So that means the new 20% boost. I haven't actually gotten this out of the store yet, so I will after this fight. And I also need to get some stuff out the uh, glory, uh, the loyalty store too, when it comes to the the war boost. But I won't be using this, using them for this first fight. We'll just go with the small attack and health boost because I can always get that from the solo objective crystals. All right. So here we go, first action, let's fight. So I like Sigil because she can nullify on carry, so I can get rid of that rod right away, as well as his three furies. Um, okay, we're gonna go ahead and nullify one more, and then throw the SB1. And we're gonna nullify again. Just nullifying like gangbusters right now. Might actually kill him, but he got he got immune, which is fine. Alright, he's unblockable. I might be in trouble. Nope. I don't know why I thought he was not blocking. It's okay. We I mean, yeah, I could have afforded to mess up a lot in that fight. It would have been fine. Alright, so that's the first fight there. Alright, next fight got hit monkey. We're gonna use the storm for this one. Not we're gonna save our um, mutant power boost, even though that would be overkill. We're just gonna just knock him down with 40 SP2 and see how much damage that does. And if that doesn't kill him, we'll just finish him off after the fact. Alright. Oh, that's low. Come on. <laughs> Got a little worried here. Don't need that. I can dead sick monkey's SP too, but I'd rather not face it. But not all of those bullets actually hit you. Get rid of his last special before I throw mine. Nope, I want you to no intercept you right now.
Let's knock him down now. Go, go straight in. Boom, boom, boom. Like I said, it should be close to killing him. All right, so that's that there. I will go ahead and get my teammate this energy for a man thing and let her know it's open. All right. Um, that's part one. Part two will rejoin once we get to this WAPS. This WAPS here. I always can't pronounce that. But anyway, this Ant Man companion in section two. That's my southern accent for you. All right, guys. Later. All right. We interrupt the live commentary with a voiceover. One of my. Alliance members submitted this fight for me to add to the video. Uh, he submitted two actually, but they were pretty long. So we're just going to do one of these. Uh, this one is um, the Spike Path, Path 7, Section 2. Uh, he had Nimrod on his team. He meant to bring, he actually brought Nimrod for this fight, but accidentally brought in Apocalypse. So you're thinking, oh crap, this is not going to be good. So obviously the first thing that jumps out is the fact that he's a mutant can't really parry him so you have to kind of heavy counter him now you can parry him because i guess he has four charges so he could hit into the block and use that tactic here and there but it's basically just going to be a bunch of exchanging of the sp1 and sp2 now it gets a little scary here he throws a heavy attack and i believe he has an emboldened ability boost active but the thing about Apocalypse, when he throws an SP3, he's going to automatically inflict you with two random buffs uh, if they were, if there wasn't any other buffs already active, uh, or debuffs, that is. So and he, he drew the short end of the stick. He actually got both damaging debuffs. Like if he would have got concussion and weakness, he would have been in a better shape. But you can see that that poison and that degeneration is taking him off. Uh, literally um, down but doesn't kill him so it's, it's about to expire and then he'll have that weakness debuff after the fact to kind of do some willpower healing from so at least he'll have that kind of gain some of that health back but, but he has pretty much un unavoidable damage he has no power control um, again meant to bring Nimrod for this fight but, but I'm not gonna purposely show a teammate just dying, but just, just kind of let you guys, just a reminder, make sure if you, before you go into a fight to bring the champ that you intended on bringing, because sometimes you bring the wrong matchup, it can probably still get done, but it's gonna cost you items at the end of the day with, with potions or revives, especially if you had intention on using the champ. Now there are a couple of things to highlight about this fight is that the fact that he can dex the SP2 way better than I can. I don't even try to dex it, I just block it. So and he, and you think that was a fluke, he's gonna do it again. So, and keep in mind, this is at low health. So if he gets hit by this at all, he's dead. He happened to dex the SP2 perfectly twice in a row. And that was clutch, because if he blocked it, I mean, he probably still would have had enough damage to heal him off. But you never know when the opponent has Assassin's Mastery, so, and, he, and that might decrease your ability accuracy. But he finishes the fight, and now we go back to our regularly scheduled program. guys part two of the war we got everything up to speed now on all my videos i still got one more video to put out you guys will see that one before this war is over should be a great one though so make sure you check it out uh but we're gonna go ahead and get section two out the way as you guys see here we're on path six and we're gonna we're just gonna simply use a um 20 boost you get these weekly in the sigil store and then we'll end up using another boost when we get to a later fight. But this will be the only boost I'm going to use here. Um, not sure. I mean, this particular um, placement is not the best for Wasp. But, I mean, because she doesn't really have 
personal prowess to fit, so she's just gonna get one. And uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get this one in. I believe there are suicides. No, no suicides. Okay. okay we're just gonna keep it simple with the parry heavy in this particular fight. Baker SB1. Rinse repeat. Operation here. Not wasting time throwing it. SP2 should get the job finished. Let's go ahead and get that done. Yeah, it's kind of like a throwaway placement. Now the old horse setup, that would have been a good placement because she would have had like, uh, what is that, Rage? So like take 2.5% damage, she becomes unblockable after five Furies. So that would have been a tougher degree of difficulty now this Elsa does have suicide so that's the reason why we're bringing mutant here and we're just gonna keep this fight pretty uh, we're not as we technically don't have to parry um, we may use a reg combat regeneration boost for the next fight based off the whatever block damage I take from this fight but again another straightforward opponent uh, we're gonna go ahead and get in here The whole purpose of this placement is just to hope that the opposition don't think you got suicides, really. Regeneration boost, why? Because we can. Um, not that. Say just to save potions, really. Yeah, because we got them in the inventory. Um, he's rank three, so I guess we'll not do the whole. Um, yeah, we'll do it. Why not? I think I, I think there is one in the store. We'll do. We'll just do this one. How about that? We'll just do that one. of lightning. You, sir, are dead. Alright, that'll do it for part two. So let's see where we are so far. We're down five to seven, but we've covered more ground. Um, in our BG, we're even. So... We'll get this uh, Cersei fight in before the night is over. We just have to make sure we have the energy to get there. But so far, pretty efficient war. So we got two more fights left. This fight will be done tonight. The next one won't be done until tomorrow morning. Well, I guess a possibility it could be done tonight. So that's why we have that six hour boost active. But anyway, guys, uh, I'll see you guys later night all right guys last fight before we go to bed unless 
one of my team members that's gonna take out Kitty Pride is still up. But no response, so more than likely Monot won't be taken down until tomorrow morning as I wake up. But we still have our six hour boost active, so we're gonna go ahead into the uh, Cersei fight as soon as the uh there we go all right so this fight is going to be pretty simple as far as from a strategy standpoint i'm going to use scarlet witch here so cersei when she launches her heavy voluntarily she gains that glancing buff i'm going to use that to my advantage because i'm a because once you once her glancing activates it goes into cooldown she only regenerates if you hit her while she's glancing so I'm gonna bait the glancing out of her and nullify it. Get in the cooldown, rip, repeat, throw SP1s, use MD to my advantage, and hopefully get her down pretty quickly. So let's see. Let's go into it. So let's bait that heavy. generation to go by so it's not a, the biggest deal there <clears throat> we just gotta wait it out all right <clears throat> probably won't kill it because I didn't get enough of those um, charges on me but it's okay Stay out the corner, that's all. Go ahead and get that. Cool down. <clears throat> Should, SB3 should kill her. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to worry about her SB2 here. <coughs> but the generation should, should take her out here. Look at that. Help, melt. And rip. Alright. So she's down, just in case my team member is able to get the kitty, I'm gonna taxi him there. But if not, I will see you guys in the morning. All right, good morning, guys. We are almost done with the war. Give you an update, we're up 19 to 16, and we have less fights left, so we're on pace to get another victory. But it's definitely not over yet. In our BG, we're uh, characteristically got seven deaths, so died three times on Boss Island. Um, but I'm gonna go in with Matt Nito against Modoc. We will apply our smaller boosts here and the ones that I can regularly get from the summoner store and then what we'll also apply just so we can get to sp3 quicker is a, a power start boost and that should be to get the job done so here we go
That should do it there. when it's all over whether we win or lose but like i said we should have this one in firm grasp so unless something dramatic happens uh, we should uh, get our third uh, victory of the season so but that'll do it for me individually this war but again this video is not over yet i'll let you guys know later all right guys so uh we did get the victory um pretty pretty uh comfortable victory here like i said we were on pace to get the win so we're at 474 attack bonuses one of our better bonuses for the season not our best what we're capable of like i said we died more times than we are accustomed to in our bg but we got 55 kills it looks like uh 10 of them didn't count because the maximum attack bonus is 495. But I knew once they declared it was over, they just made sure they wailed away. It looks like we missed, did we miss diversity? Yeah, we missed diversity. We need to make sure that's aware in BG1, um, just in case we get closer wars. But the attack bonus are much more comparable across the board. Uh, BG1 went from worst to first, so that's great because uh, that's the one. BG2, BG3 usually is around this amount. We've been in the 160s before also, so if we can all be across the board 160, that'll win us. That'll we'll win out the rest of the season because we're frankly we're better than the opponents that we faced the last two wars. And even though this opponent did finish in Platinum 3 last season, it just lets us know what we're capable of doing if we put our best effort together. But... Uh, that'll do it guys please like share comment below subscribe and hit that bell notification